What is Film Hub? Film Hub is a distribution platform. At least that, that's how they describe themselves. When Film Hub first started, they called themselves a, oh geez, I don't even remember how they referred to themselves, but it was it, basically, okay, brass tacks, like real talk. They're an aggregator. They, they, they call themselves a distribution platform, but it's an aggregator. They, they are, you know, you're, you're uploading a movie to them and they are submitting it to platforms. And then they are taking a percent off the back end and they're giving you the rest. What makes Film Hub unique, and as far as I know, really the first of its kind like this, is, you know, at least initially, and we'll get into some of the new costs later, but at least initially there's absolutely no cost. Like you upload it, you don't pay for anything, they submit it, they do all the legwork, they take their 20% and they pay you when it comes in. And, and that was that. And so, and a lot of people would say, well, there's other aggregators that were doing that, but Film Hub took this tech, you know, like an algorithm based tech and they created a website where you could upload it yourself. You don't have to deal with like sales reps, like it's all like kind of automated. So like they can deal with a huge volume of films and they have connections to platforms that filmmakers can't do themselves like Tubi, you know, and now people will say, well, you can do Amazon yourself. And yeah, you can, but like Amazon's gotten way more selective with stuff. And even me, like even on some of my higher quality stuff, I'm like, like it's a risk to do, or it's more of a risk to upload to Amazon yourself on whether or not they'll take it or not you're a little more likely, not 100% likely, but you're a little more likely it's gonna get up if you go through Film Hub. So I tend to just, I give up that 20% to, to lessen the risk that it won't get up. You know, but, so there, like there, there's that. And it's all, it's all automated, you know? And then they're giving you analytics, which are not quite real time. Their analytics are at the mercy of the platforms. So whatever the platforms are, reporting or when they're reporting, Film Hub is reporting. And where filmmakers get really confused is Film Hub has this thing, they have your projected earnings and then they have your actual earnings. So like a platform like Amazon will say, hey, um, this month your movie made $100, right? And that is technically projected earnings because it hasn't settled, like, because there'll be like either, you know, like a, you know, a missed thing in the algorithm or there'll be returns, you know, it's like if it's transactional, like it's not the actual number. It's, it's most likely pretty close, but it's not the actual number. So if, like on Film Hub, they have this little graph and you know, the one graph is projected earnings and then one's actual earnings and the actual earnings don't come in until you actually get paid. But you kind of know like ballpark what those numbers are gonna be on a, Sometimes a monthly basis, sometimes a weekly basis, sometimes a bi-weekly basis, depending on the platform. Like like Tubi, or at least they tend to report Tubi about once a week, and that typically happens on Wednesdays. But like occasionally, it, it might be till Thursday or Friday before it comes out, or there'll be a bug in the system, and maybe it won't even come out that week at all. You know, and then it'll come out the next week. But, and you know, and that can be irritating. But what I, filmmakers need to remember is like nobody ever reported stuff like this before, you know, and then the cool, you know, distributors back in the day, you know, they'll pay you quarterly and that, and that's usually like a quarter back. So like six months from when the, when the, the money was actually made or reported, like you'll see it six months later, you know, and, and you won't even know what that amount is until you get like this really generalized report from a distributor that'll say like, U.S. streaming and a, and a number, but you like won't, won't know what platforms or you know all of that. And then, but Film Hub made it made this much on Amazon, made this much on Tubi, made this much on YouTube, whatever. And nobody had done that before, and that was really exciting, like really exciting. And it democratized uh, distribution. Now that's a double-edged sword. On one hand, it's really cool that, you know, almost anybody can upload and get a movie and get them onto Tubi, but at the same time, everybody can upload and get a movie onto Tubi. So it has created a glut of content in the marketplace. And I'm not saying this is just Film Hub. This was something that was gonna happen whether Film Hub was around or not. But like the reason I really like Film Hub is they've created this, this business, they've helped to support this business model that is, that, you know, makes me six figures a year. 
you know, I make these like small niche documentaries. And, you know, I mentioned earlier, I, I can't remember if it was off camera or not, but we were talking about how um, a lot of distributors, traditional distributors, they wouldn't take these movies. You know, like they like like they would they'll never get to Tubi. Like I the only places I could distribute them would be like YouTube and you know, maybe Prime Video Direct. And for a long time, Prime Video Direct wouldn't take them and still might reject them because a lot of them are, you know, they're 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 low budget. You know, so Film Hub has made it to where I can make these things and they can find an audience and I can I can make a living off these little things. And that market did not exist for me prior to film hub. So for that, I will always love them. Now, there are things that have happened that a lot of filmmakers don't like. So like I said, when they first started, there was absolutely no upfront costs and there still aren't, it's, there's no money to upload or anything like that. But now there's like, there got to be a lot of pushback before they created this rule. Like filmmakers would get mad, like like Film Hub has a uh, YouTube channel called Stash TV, and they would you know put movies on their YouTube channel. And initially, that YouTube channel was not monetized, you know. So like you had to kind of wait for it to get monetized to see anything from it. So filmmakers were mad that their movie was on a free thing, not earning them any money, you know. So Film Hub. Uh, <clears throat> And, and complained about it. And film hub and uh, filmmakers started in droves. You know, I want, I don't want my movie on this channel. Like, remove it. And so they did. And 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 this isn't just Stash TV too, because Film Hub has like, I don't know, three hundred platforms there, two hundred something like that they submit to. And some filmmakers are like, well, I never heard of this, you know, Rinky Dink Roku channel. I don't want it on there. And, I mean, I personally think that's silly, but you know, whatever. If, if you don't want your movie there, you don't want it there. So they would have them take it down. Now, Film Hub is dealing with over 15,000 different filmmakers with multiple projects. And it is not this big, you know, corporation. It's, it's still kind of a mom and pop shop, you know, like they have workers and stuff, but it's not, it's not huge. So every time they have to issue a takedown or they have to, you know, like change the artwork or, you know, like filmmakers want to, oh, I want to change my synopsis now. I want to change my poster. And, and these are all valid things, but you got to understand it's taking up man hours for them. You know, so now what they have done is they've created tiers where if you want to put, if you want to block a channel from like Film Hub can't put the movie up there, you have to pay them like an ongoing subscription to block that channel. So if you don't want stat your movie on Stash TV on YouTube, you have to pay like, a, I think it's $99 a month and you have to continually pay that. If you don't pay it, the block goes. And I totally 100% understand why certain filmmakers will not want to do that and won't want their movies on YouTube. And I, I get it. There's nothing wrong with that. But it, it's become a necessity from Film Hub's perspective to do this because they were, they, you know, they were, they were, they were drowning in man hours from all of the back and forth. At least that's my understanding of it. Now, for me and what I do, I don't think on smaller independent films, generally speaking, I don't think the cross collateralization hurts. I don't think having your movie on YouTube and having your movie on Tubi and Amazon all at the same time, I don't think it hurts it. I'm not saying that windowing isn't right for certain movies. It absolutely is. And if yours is one of them, Film Hub might not be for you. So like the documentary that I was talking about a little bit earlier, it made $22,000 in three months and it made that money on Amazon, but at, on transactional Amazon. But at that exact same time, it was free on YouTube through more than one channel because, you know, I had it on my own channel and then, you know, Film Hub had threw it on, you know, Stash or maybe YouTube movies and something I can't remember. But it was on all these things free and still made the money on transactional, which just goes to show you. And yes, this was my example, you know, and it might be a unique example, but I don't believe so. I have 80 films in my library and I've seen this pattern repeat itself over and over. Generally speaking, on much smaller movies, it is not going to hurt you to be on a free platform and be on a transactional at the same time. It's not going to hurt it, like in, in general. Now, you know, somebody's going to hear me say that, then they're going to go do it. Their movie's not going to make any money on transactional, and they're going to say, well, it's because it was on YouTube. And maybe that's true, but it's probably not. You know, because again, in general, most independent films don't make much money. And then and filmmakers are looking for something to blame. 
other than like the movie just didn't hit, you know, and nine times out of 10 is the movie just didn't hit. It's not because Film Hub threw it on Stash TV, but that's my opinion. <laughs> what should filmmakers know about the payment schedule from Film Hub? So with Film Hub payment, people should understand that like, like Film Hub is not setting these payment schedules. Like the payment schedule is dependent on the platform. And some, uh, some platforms pay monthly, some platforms pay bi-monthly, some pay quarterly, some pay bi-yearly, you know, all different things. And even within that, so you have a platform and they pay monthly and say like Amazon. Amazon, I, I think typically pays around the 28th of the month but it doesn't always happen like that. Not even through Prime Video Direct, which you're going direct to Amazon. Some months, it'll be as late as the fourth or fifth, you know, or it'll be early, you know? So like, it, there's not like a set thing. And, and it's the reason why for many, many, many years, distributors paid on a quarterly basis or a quarter back. It was so it gave them time to collect all of the straggling money and then give the filmmakers an exact amount on an exact date and you know, like no problems. What Film Hub has done is like they pay has the platforms pay. Like, like maybe not quite real time, but close to it. Like they'll collect the money on Monday and you'll get paid for it on like Thursday or something like that. But what can happen then, and filmmakers get really upset about this and start saying they're, they're holding on to my money or they're ripping me off. Cause like say for six months in a row to be paid on the 22nd and then on the seventh month, it doesn't come in until the 28th or like maybe it did come on the 22nd, but like something happened at Film Hub, whether it be, you know, an algorithm or a bug thing or, you know, something happened and the money couldn't be accounted for until the following week or whatever it is. And, but like, you just have to kind of roll with it and understand that up until like Film Hub and, and some, there are some other distributors that do this, but, but few, we had to wait sometimes up to six months to get paid from when money came in. And now, you know, like we get it when they get it, you know, or, you know, within a reasonable time frame from when they get it. And again, I, that, I think that is revolutionized like distribution. And there are other distributors that are, they're, they're having to follow that because they're going to get left behind. You know, there, there's distributors now that are starting or at least thinking about transitioning to like online dashboards where filmmakers can upload their movies directly to them as opposed to mailing in the drives and all of that stuff. Because with Film Hub, it's all electronic. And I like, I, like, I, I like that, but that's, that's how the, that's how the pay works. Now, Tubi pays monthly, Amazon pays monthly, um, but it's monthly, but on a 90 day delay because that's how they pay. So if you make a hundred dollars in January, that money's not going to be paid till January, February, end of March. You know what I mean? And then monthly after that, but it's always three months back. So, oh, and one other thing about that is filmmakers will get confused because they, they say, hey, it pays monthly. And then they're like, hey, I made, and then they just put a movie up and it's their first movie. And the movie made uh, $2,000 in January. Where's my money? It, you, they don't pay actually until March, the platform, not Film Hub. When Film Hub gets the money, they'll pay you. Anyway. Can you talk a little bit about quality control and the difference between submitting your film and uploading it to Film Hub as opposed to uploading it straight to YouTube? Um, okay, so they do have a quality control system. And I, I believe it's a mix of human and auto. I think things go through an auto thing first and if things are flagged, it fails and then you have to fix it. And then maybe final thing is a human review. Uh, at least that's what I understand. I have never actually talked to them about their QC process, but there, it is different from YouTube. Not everything's gonna make it. There are some technical standards. Like you can't have audio dropouts, you know, um, and, and then there are, there are a few like weird streaming rules like Amazon, for example, and you know, maybe Tubi is the same. I don't know, but I think this rule was established because of Amazon. Amazon doesn't want URLs in the movie. So like, like if you're doing a documentary and somebody talks about a website, sometimes that can flag it even verbally like can flag it. I'm not saying it always does, but it can, but you're not supposed to like, like visually have a, like if you have a lower third and it has somebody website, cause they look at it, it has a third party advertisement. 
So like that's kind of a rule. So I, I had a couple documentaries that failed because of that. And I, I basically just had to cut those things out or not have them in the movie. Uh, in scrolls can't have opening credits. You can't have uh, like additional scenes after the movie's over. Like you can do like a post credit scene usually, but sometimes the auto system might flag it. So like I don't really do post credit scenes unless it's really important to me that it's in there. And then I'll let Film Hub know as I'm uploading it that it's there. Um, but it's mostly, most what most films fail for though is not the film itself, is the art. They have, uh, they have some art standards and it's, they, they make you upload six different sizes, aspect ratios of posters. You know, so you'll have a you know, regular poster, you'll have a slightly wider version of that, you'll have a landscape, you'll have a really skinny landscape, you'll have a tech, textless landscape. And then there are some rules about the fonts, like they want the fonts to be readable at a thumbnail size. So one thing I do whenever I do a poster, I shrink it down to a little tiny and it makes sure I can still clearly read the title. If you cannot, they'll fail it. I had one I thought was pretty readable, but it was a little ornate and it failed. And one other negative about this, which I don't particularly like, I think that they should ask before they do this or at least tell you, but there are situations now where they will just auto fix a thing. Like say your font's not great or not readable, you know, they'll go into Photoshop, they'll remove it and they'll put a new font on it. Whether you like it or not, it's up there, you know? And so I don't personally like that. I, they, they did it to a title of mine and I hate the font. And, but at the end of the day, the movie, that movie did okay. And because of all the good things that they do, like, I can accept those. Now there's some filmmakers that won't accept. And if you're listening to this and you don't like the like them putting movies up on YouTube and that, then do not submit to film up. But if that is okay with you, if you can roll with that, then they can be great. What do you see as the future of film distribution? Honestly, and I don't mean to sound like a huge like, you know, film hub cheerleader, but I, I do think the future of it is gonna be more things like that. Like whether Film Hub, you know, continues or, you know, like goes bankrupt or succeeds or fails, I think the future is going to be online, algorithm based, like, you know, where you're submitting things just like you do to YouTube. And I do think analytics and stuff are going to get better and better. I, I think we're probably like I, I remember talking to someone who was kind of in the know with how, how Film Hub's algorithm works and and it's something they're working on quicker uh reporting. I, I, th I think we're, you know, a year or so out from having more real-time analytics. Like, I think that kind of stuff is coming. And I think there'll be more companies like Film Hub that'll cause more. Like, the problem with Film Hub right now is there's no real competition for them. They are kind of the only game in town. So, like, this $99 tier thing, which a lot of people don't like, and they're absolutely, you know, right to not like it, um, there'll be other competitors. And then stuff like that might start getting cheaper or going away because they have to compete. Right now, they, they just kind of, they can do whatever they want because they are the only game in town. Like I said, I hated the font thing, but I have nowhere else to go with that title. You know, so I'm, I, I got to deal with it. But, you know, a year from now when there's somebody else just like them, man, I'll be like, all right, well, forget you, take it down, go, go across the street. But that right now that doesn't exist. And a lot of filmmakers don't like that. And I... I understand. And you said you're going to be making a video on your channel of the Film Hub dashboard so people can see it. Yeah, yeah, I'm, uh, it's something I'm writing right now. I, Cause I, I had one a few years ago, but the dashboard, everything has changed. So it, it's not really relevant anymore. So yeah, I was planning on kind of going through the upload process, explaining the reports and trying to explain the, the payment schedule, which to be 100% honest, I don't always get because it, it is complicated, you know, because I, I like to be, for example, I said they pay 90 days back, but I think it's actually 95 days back, which is like a weird odd number. And, and so, and even if it was just 90 days, you know, it's never going to be the same day of the month because, you know, like different months have different amount of days. And if you're paying every 90, that 95 can start moving, you know, forward or back. So if you're getting paid on the 16th regularly, it might be the 14th, three months from now or the other way.